Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon for our Sundance 2022 panel discussion, uh, a live panel with several of our SCA alumni who have films currently in the Sundance 2022 festival, including Abby Corbin with uh, the screenwriter, director, and executive producer of 892 feature film and competition. Uh, Sam Davis, producer and director of photography of Long Line of Ladies, which is a documentary short. Uh, Ross Dinnerstein, the producer of TikTok Boom, feature film. Uh, Cheng Ling Zhe, the director, screenwriter, producer, and animator of the short animated film Meal on the Plate. And Reka uh, Zetapchi, the director, producer of Long Line of Ladies. Um, and the panel will be moderated by Doug Blush, um, a uh, long-standing favorite uh, here at the USC School of Cinematic Arts. And uh, just to give you a more proper welcome, I'd like to have Dean Elizabeth Daly jump on to say hello. Well, welcome everybody. It's so great to have parents, students, alums, people from all over the country, all over the world joining us for this wonderful panel and to be with this very distinguished group of alums. Um, of course, we wish we were in Park City. We miss each other. We miss, uh, even, we even miss being cold, but we certainly miss all the, the films and the camaraderie and the, the chance to see one another again. And of course, give out scarves uh, to those who are have films in, in competition. Um, the, this year we have 50 alumni, students, faculty with films in, in Park City, in Slamdance and Sundance. So, we congratulate them and we're just as excited for them as if we were there. But hopefully next year, we're all gonna be back and um, ready to, to do the things that we love so doing together. But uh, welcome and enjoy the panel. And I'm gonna turn this back over to Alex. Thanks, Dean Daly. Um, just a quick note for anyone who wants to ask a question, uh, just type it up in the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom panel. Um, and once we open it up, we may invite some people to turn on their cameras. Uh, if you, uh, and join us as a panelist to ask your question, if you would rather not be, uh, caught on camera, just put that in the uh, question that Doug should go ahead and read it. Um, so enjoy and Doug over to you. Sundance, Sundance, see, Sundance, uh, it's totally real, it's totally happening, yeah, I'm up in Park City, and it's freezing here, and no, we're not, um, I, it, it's, it's both celebratory, and of course, a little sad that we're not doing this live in Park City, um, first of all, I just, I want to tell everybody that um, it's still so real for filmmakers to get their films to a place like Sundance, and so, if all goes well, this is the last year that we'll be doing this Brady Bunch style. And uh, we did this last year as well. It keeps the spirit alive and it's, it's a real joy for me to see uh, yet another year of amazing films, going to Sundance, watching these films. Um, and in some ways uh, we're democratizing the film festival a little bit by being able to watch it all over the world. And, and that's something interesting that's changing about film festivals. And maybe we'll talk about this a little more later on. Um, because, uh, you know, now everybody can kind of share in this. Uh, so it's very exciting to have uh, just a sample of our, of our amazing USC uh, alums who are getting the latest films in there uh, and kind of changing the world in some cases of uh, how we make films. Um, I'm a longtime Sundance vet. I, I literally have been going for so many years that it would reveal too much about how long I've been going and how old I am. So I'm gonna say that I've been to a lot of them and I've had a lot of films there that I participated in in some form or another. I've been everything from producer to editor to consultant to uh, hopefully someday a director, we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, um, it's, it's always a joy to go to Park City. Uh, there's a lot of great things that happen there. Uh, it's crazy and crowded and people can't drive because they're always from LA and they don't know what snow is. So it's total mayhem. And in the midst of that mayhem, a lot of great art happens and a lot of great uh, uh, connections happen between filmmakers too. And I think that's the one thing that, that 
I love most about it is meeting other filmmakers and really spending time hanging out and, and talking. In fact, I put that kind of on priority above going to see films sometimes. If I have the choice of hanging out with a bunch of filmmakers and talking about stuff or going to the film, I'll, I'll often choose going to talk to the filmmakers. And uh, the good news is that we all get to talk now uh, in this little square box thing that we have here. So I wanna say hi to everybody and uh, congratulations ahead of time. Um, if you haven't screened yet, or if you, if you have screened, uh, we wanna hear how that went. So um, I'm just gonna go around and start talking to each of you. Some of you I know, some of you uh, I know your work. Um, Ab is Abby or Abby? Abby, yeah? Abby. Abby uh, Demaris uh, Corbin, uh, tell me all about your Sundance experience so far. Um, talk about what, what it's been like to take, and th this is a full feature, um, eight, uh, 892, yeah? So tell us all about it. Sure, it's been a lot of sitting right here <laughs> on Zooms talking to people. And um, it's we missed the, the bonding experience. It's been really hard to make a film in the middle of a pandemic where everybody's separated. And um, that's something I know that everybody's eagerly awaiting the end of. But in the meantime, we, we are hearty people and we find a way to go where audiences are and where people are and, and we find a way through. Um, that's been a large part of what this experience has been. So um, I've never been to Park City, but you know, virtually I'm enjoying your photo. <laughs> this, is, this is one of the modes that Sundance is in. Oftentimes it's, you get covered by snow on the way into the thing, then you melt during the screening. So uh, in a way it's, it's almost, uh, it's certainly a little more comfortable to do it this way, but I definitely can't wait to get back up there. And again, um, you know, I, I imagine everybody who's here who hasn't been before, you're probably going to go back. So that, that that's the really great news is that um, this is just one year in many uh, in many of your careers. So uh, congratulations, though. What what was it like um, directing such amazing talent as John Boyega and, and your cast? What was that, especially during these times? Great. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Eight Nine Two, it's uh, about one man who uh, has a sincere hearted rebellion against a broken system and walks into a bank and says, give me what's mine, and I have a bomb. It's for a little context for those who haven't seen it. Um, uh, John was incredible. He's one of the best partners that I could have asked for. He's um, a true artist through and through, and we focused on the work. As most indies are, it's a really tight schedule of production, so you have to really make every day, every minute count and he came ready and we had only a very limited time to rehearse due to schedule. And thankfully we were on the same page. We knew that this was about seeing the humanity. We had a really simple story to be tell, told that, that a lot of people are really familiar with and that's a heartbreaking thing. But we wanted to acknowledge the familiarity of it and know that this is a story we didn't wanna hear again in 30 years. So we wanted to force the audience to look at the humans that were in this that situation. A decision that you some people really acknowledge and some people don't, but that we as a team are collectively really proud of. That's amazing. Uh, so your premiere has happened now, right? You yes. Have, you have premiered your film. Um, and, and it's unique, you know, obviously in this virtual space, but what, what was that like to, to know that your film was being screened? And I, I, they sell a certain number of tickets uh, in, the, in the Zoom, about 5,000 I've heard. Yeah, so you had 5,000 people watching and then after that was the Q&A. How did it all go? What was it like? Um, it's unique. I, I actually edited the film right here. So I had a couple of people over from the film to watch the screen on the same TV that we'd edited the thing on and you have to do like a near field mix. And we of course have been preparing for a theatrical. So, you know, you pivot really quickly and those other deliverables were due a little later. So you have a lot of last minute switches to the schedule that happen when switching to a virtual plan. Um, in terms of the actual experience, it's still fulfilling to show people your work and the story meant and means so much to us as a team, as a, as a 
community to tell that it's deeply gratifying, but also simultaneously a little weird because you have to then say, all right, guys, we got to stop watching before the last 10 minutes because I get to jump on a Zoom to do a QA and a um, instead of, you know, being able to watch the audience have that holy hush at the end of the film where we know it's actually sinking into their souls. You miss those moments, but you know from Twitter messages and the nice ones and uh, <laughs> the 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 emails that you get, that means a lot more um, because that's the only real connection that you have to real audience members to find out, hey, is this work that we just spent a long time on actually connecting with people? Um, so thanks for the people that did reach out and, and are continuing to do so. It means a lot it, it, when you can't really sit in a theater and feel the weight of what you've done. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I feel for everybody who has to go through this process of not having that live audience, but obviously your film will. And uh, hopefully there's a there's you know going to be a release plan and you will have it in theaters the way it was meant to be seen. So um, do you know anything yet about how that's all gonna play out or is that- uh, I TV? do, but I can't talk about it yet. Oh, so I love we'll that. talk okay. about it. <laughs> we have NDAs all over the place here, guys. Uh, no, that, that's- we'll talk that's, about it in a week or two. That's great to hear that. And we can't wait to hear announcements. That's one of the exciting things about Sundance is every day Variety and Hollywood Reporter run the, the deals at Sundance that are happening and, and the news and things like that. And uh, if you have a film there, you are constantly checking the headlines to see what's going on and what deals are getting made and everything. And uh, it, it, it's very exciting and, and very hard work, actually. So that's, that's part of the process is sort of, you know, doing the things you do to get your film out there while you're there. Some films do go without a deal and some films make deals there. So it's, uh, it really is kind of a heart pounding process of what you do. It's a, it's a unique thing for everybody involved, for the vets of Sundance, not me. Um, I've heard that it's just, you can't rely on the patterns of what's been done years and years and years. So everybody's trying to figure out this market as we go, because it's not even the same as last year. It's, it's evolved so much. And of course, every year, even when you're at Sundance, it's going to have its own uniqueness, but it's, it's one of those things that as a filmmaker, it's like, okay, where's the hope for indie film? How do we <laughs> give a path? Um, for projects to actually be made for young artists, what is what does that look like? Yeah, and I, that, that's kind of the joke at, at many film festivals, but especially Sundance is half the time you're there, you're going to panels to find out how nobody knows what's going to be next, you know, or what's going on right now. Um, and, and that's one of the things that are that's actually really useful about a film festival is the people who literally are making the decisions and bringing the technology forward and everything, they're there going, we don't know either. And we we're, let's talk about it and let's figure out where we're going to head it. next. Yeah. And I, I know you have a, a connection to, to some pretty wild technology and, and new <laughs> innovations, uh, your film suitcase and, and other things that, uh, that you've done and your work that you've, that you've been doing for a while really brings in new ideas of technology. And what do you think? Where, where are things at right now? There's no way for me or anybody else really to be able to forecast because in the world that we're in, you'll find something new on Twitter in five minutes, right? But I, I, I do believe that the universal thing we can rely on is story, that humans need story, that you need catharsis, you need a, a place that you can face your fears, that you can be a new person and try that on and see what it looks like. So that the, the thing that we will be able to rely on is that storytelling will triumph, that humans need storytelling to, to grow. And the, the beautiful thing is that we won't know what forms it takes until it's created. So we have an opportunity to then say, hey, how can we be a part of that? And what can we do to further storytelling and sharpen our tool set there? That, that's, that's what I'm excited about this next year. How can I become a stronger storyteller? Yeah, it's all about storytelling. That's that's the good news is that we're we're all still dealing with these waves of technology, but the best films take it and just make it another thing that helps tell you tell the story. So that's great to hear. I can't wait to see what's coming next. Um, I'm going to go around the room a little bit here, and uh, so uh, uh, Cheng Chenglin uh, Ji, you you uh, have um, a, another. Yours is a short this year, right? I just wanted to make sure. Uh, yeah. You lost me. Yeah. 
and yeah. it's it, it's in uh, it's in the the main competition, the shorts competition. Yeah. Uh, you premiered already. Uh, yeah, it's in it's premiered in Lovan International Film Festival for okay. world premiere, and uh, now here is North American premiere in Sundance. Yeah. So. Which is great to see because it does it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to premiere at Sundance. You can actually premiere somewhere else in the world, and Sundance mm -hmm. goes and finds some of the best films and brings them to Sundance. So that's that's a great uh, kind of kind of a double win that you got to premiere internationally and then come to Sundance with this new film. Um, what was the process like this time? Is this and is this your first film? I know that Life Smart uh, Life Smartphone was at Sundance, or it was. Uh, uh previously uh, this is my second one uh yeah last smartphone went into sundance in 2016 mm -hmm. but by that time i just uh visit the u.s i'm not a here usc study or um and then i come here so mm -hmm. i think this time i got a more experience about the sundance and um yeah the film i actually i got some like idea inspiration while i still in the school but i don't like have time to uh, finish and uh to make the real production happens, but uh, I do got a lot of uh, uh, advice and also a lot of help from the faculties, and they really teach me a lot of st uh, storytelling things that I um, end up like apply to the, this film. And uh, this film is is down in the pandemic uh, period, so I it's kind of good. Like I I guess that I'm the only one that uh, the production that. Uh, doesn't get influenced by the like stay at home because I'm doing the animation so it's uh, it's kind of like give me more time can just uh, stay at home and think about how to like report the stuff and how to uh, change the ending and how to make the characters performance more charming like I, I really got time to really think about the film and uh, have the production down yeah that's great yeah it's, so you know with a virtual premiere um, obviously, there's a lot of other places that the film can go. Are you planning to continue from Sundance to go back into live screenings? Do you have a plan for that going forward? Uh, yeah, I really because uh, yeah, I, I think I really want the film to be screened in the theater because I really want people like to see people's like a reaction because like when people are, like watching the film together, it's really like they laugh together and they can talk about it after the, right after the screening. So for now, it's like, just like what Abby get, just uh, some messages and uh, yeah, and just some comments from the internet. But uh, I really hope that the film can be screened in the theater because we also have a very talented um, uh, uh, SCA alumni do the sound and the music and also the mix for the film. So when I, uh, it's 5.1 uh, mixed, so when I, uh, the make the DCP. I listen in the Dolby theater. It really feels different. So I really hope they could like, or in other festivals, or like could be screening in the theater. So, yeah, I think that brings up a good point. Is that there are so many SCA grads and even students who have work in Sundance that they've done different things on, including the absolutely crucial element of sound. I'm so glad you brought that up because to, to not hear yeah. it the way it was was meant to be heard in a theater, you're missing some of the great impact, I know. And uh, uh, hopefully people at home are watching with their 5-1 surround home rigs. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's always gonna be better in a theater and, and that's gonna be a really special thing to get your film out that way. Mm -hmm. um, so how was the reaction? How was the Q&A and, and uh, the process after that? I think for the short film, the Q&A is more like a recorded. It's not like a, mm -hmm. like we screening and we right after have the Q&A. Um, but I think like I got many good uh, feedback from the audience. It's like they comments like this is very cute animation. This is very good. But uh, yeah, I'm still like try to get more conversation if people can just uh, after the watch, watch the film, we can talk about it right away. And also like people may have some misunderstanding about the film, but we can talk about it then to like, because the character is more like, they, they or think like, they are guess that I'm a vegetarian because the film is like, uh, uh, somehow like imply, imply that I am, but I'm not actually. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's many uh, fun stories that uh, people, after people watch the film, they have the, thoughts that may be a little bit different from you but it's very good to like we can talk about it so 
have you had a chance to watch a lot of the other, especially the the animated shorts and the other short films? I mean, have you been talking to the other directors and other film crews during? This yeah, time? yeah, yeah, yeah. I I have chance to watch uh, many short films and uh, for the feature films like uh, well, uh, the Abyss film, I the tickets sell out very soon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't expect that because I think oh we are going to online so they maybe not that limit on the tickets but uh, not so end up I watch a lot of uh, shots and uh, yeah I think the the Sundance selection is always like have different type of animation like because animation itself is have a lot of styles like stop motion and uh, um, like even in 2D we have different like technique or the texture so I is re really just to open my mind about a lot of um, like what anime the possibility of animation is also like oh it's like also I got inspired from other people's work so that's great yeah that that's the greatest thing about any film festival is really that that artist crosstalk that's it's in a way it's sort of like the next step after a film school like SCA it's you 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 get to go be with film filmmakers who are especially are rising up they're doing new work they're doing their maybe their first second third film mm -hmm. and and you get to trade ideas and sometimes even make bonds i know uh, for myself at sundance usually when i go it means that i will be probably working on something that was a result of some great conversation that mm -hmm. we had during sundance so it's sort of like the it's sort of seeding the farm and going back and starting another film um, yeah so yeah, I don't know if you've, you've met collaborators at festivals that way, or if you've met people that you plan to bring into your team or, uh, or if that happens, but it seems like it happens a lot of festivals in my experience. Yeah, I make friends there. Like uh, in 2016, I made some friends here as, uh, at Sundance as well. And now we still have the connection and we still can get more inspired from that people. And we saw like uh, that people's new feel, we can, we can know that, oh, what the growth path of him, like you can know better. So I, I always got inspired from that as well. So that's great. Yeah, that's that's why we all hope, you know, we'll go back to non-virtual so we can really have that 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 yeah, yeah, interaction, yeah. that humor interaction again. But congratulations, that's fantastic. And again, I'm a big fan of your work. I think uh Thank you, you. you do amazing things in your media. It's just great. Um moving around the room. Uh hello Ross. Ross uh Dinistein, how are you? Uh Good. here we go nice again. Yes. Good to see you again. And uh, yeah, I, I obviously you have you have a long history with many films. Uh, you you are a prodigious producer, and <laughs> among many other things, and uh, also of Campfire fame. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But how did this one go? T uh, TikTok boom! I'm so excited to see this. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm so glad you guys are focusing on this. It's it's of great interest to me. So tell us about the film. Yeah, so we, we premiered Sunday night. Um, you know, whatever you want to call that virtually. And uh, it was pretty fun because I got to watch it with my my wife and my kids. And it was my uh, my seven-year-old son's first ever film of mine that he's ever seen. And it's really kind of a odd, you know, cautionary tale film, but it is like works really well as like family viewing because TikTok is, you know, they really came out of my 10-year-old daughter wanting to get TikTok mm -hmm. on her phone. And once I started doing my own research as like a, you know, semi-decent parent, it's like, this is, this app's pretty fucking scary. Excuse my language. <laughs> and um, so we, so that's really how it came out of. And it went really well. The reviews have been super positive. We, we got our, you know, offers are coming in from, you know, the big, a big streamer. And um, hopefully we sort of get it figured out in the next, you know, couple of days. And looks like investors are going to make money, which means we have to live another day uh, onto the next one. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I know I'm really proud of it. I'm, I think the film is really going to make some noise. Um, you know, it, it, I can't complain. I'm, other than I'm just sort of sick of virtual, you know, two years in a row, virtual Sundance. Uh, it's not fun. You know, it's, it's so hard to get movies into Sundance. And uh, I just feel bad for the first time filmmakers that, um, you know, haven't been able to experience it in person. I've been fortunate to have had you know, a couple films in person there in years past but like it never gets old like I, getting the Sundance acceptance is it's the end all be all for for me and I you know I think in the, in what we do so it's uh I'm disappointed uh but I'm happy with the outcome 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's all we can do now. And it's, this is, I give credit to Sundance for putting on such a, such an inclusive show. I mean, they, there are a lot more people who are seeing our films this year yeah. because they've made it so big, you know, they've, they've, they've expanded the universe of who can see it. And, uh, you know, you, you probably have some thoughts about this is like, does this change the democratization of film festivals? Does it mean that we're always going to do this now? Is, it, is there going to be a virtual bigger element for people who can't travel to places? Like yeah, I mean, look, Toronto or I think the hybrid model is here to stay and I think it's great, but I really hope they don't get rid of the, on, the, the in-person thing. Like it, it's just- Here, here. <laughs> you know, South by is coming up and I think it's going to be this hybrid. I think it'll be in person because it's Texas and, you know, yeah. I'm from Texas, so I can say it. They don't. They don't care as much. Uh, so, uh, yes. but uh, but I do believe. I think that this hybrid model is great. I think it's awesome, and I think Sundance, before they sort of canceled the in-person part, I think had a great plan in place for the hybrid model. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I I hope it's here to stay. Yeah, I know from statistics last year, Sundance said that more people attended, quote unquote, the film festival than in the, in the previous ever history yeah. of their festival, probably the same this year. So yeah, I think we're, we're looking at, you know, the pandemic sort of has reshaped us by, by unintentional uh, necessity into a whole new world of how we put our films out there. It's really interesting. And you, you've, um, you know, you, you've, you've, dealt in this world of virtual versus real. Uh, one of my favorite filmmakers who you've produced with, uh, Rodney Asher, who does great explorations of human consciousness and some of our darker uh, impulses and fears and things. And uh, there was a, a film called Glitch in the Matrix, which you had, uh, that was that was last year, two years yeah, ago. Yeah. yeah. We made a pandemic movie before the pandemic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which was... Very, yeah, no, thanks, that, thanks for that. Thanks for yeah, exactly. Uh, that's when people think it's like, oh, this is so appropriate. You made this, you know, movie about you know living in a virtual reality, and uh, it's so, so like on brand for the pandemic. And it's like we worked on this for two years before COVID ever even happened, but it was uh, almost too prescient for for our own good. Yeah. Well, thanks for calling that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, no, but it's, it, that's, it's a terrific film because it, it does address some of these things ahead of much of the rest of the discussion. It seems like you sort of have your finger on the pulse of that. Uh, some of the other work you do with Campfire is very kind of forward leaning. It seems like you're always kind of looking at the next thing or you're, you're, you're taking into account like where are we heading? Uh, that's pretty yeah. interesting. Well, I appreciate for recognizing it. No, we're really proud of that. We, we do try to recognize trends and try to get ahead of stuff. You know, I feel like we were early in the true crime space uh, with The Innocent Man and, and you know, we did Heaven's Gate, which I think, again, was sort of beginning of uh, kind of the, the cult stuff. I mean, there was Wild Wild Country before us, and then we just did The Way Down with HBO Max, which is about sort of a present day cult uh, based in Nashville. And we're doing more episodes of that. Yeah, I think if anybody wants to know what the next streamer obsession is going to be, just look at whatever Ross is working on over at Campfire, because Thanks. that'll be the next thing that's going to be hot. Well, I um, appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's great to see you again. And uh, congrats. I mean, it's it's such a big deal. You know, I think people lose sight of that if they've been there a few times that it's it is a huge deal because it's so every rare. time. It, yeah, it's, never, it's it always, never gets old. There, I, I promise deal. you, I will never complain ever about getting a film into Sundance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congrats. I mean, this is, it's, it's just uh, great to see you again. And next time in Park City, um, hang out though. We're going to do a whole round robin of things coming great. up here. Um, all right. So uh, I just checking my notes here. We're, we're finally coming to uh, a very familiar turf for me. I'm very thrilled to have uh, the, the, the most dashing couple in uh, documentary these days. Uh, Sam and Reka, how are you? And uh, how's it going? Hey Doug. Hi Doug. Uh, what a title. Yeah. <laughs> so good to see you. It's great. Um, we were just saying like how awesome this panel has been so far. Just getting to like just hear directly from the filmmakers. It uh, goes back to what you were saying earlier, just about that being like your favorite part of just the festival experience is like getting to have you know get that insight from filmmakers who've you know who've all actively been working on productions. Always something to learn there. But it's so good to see you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've had we've had a little Sundance history, and I'll I'll just uh, we'll go behind the scenes for a second. 
although uh, period end of sentence didn't start at Sundance, um, we ended up doing things at Sundance that were very important the next year. Um, I remember uh, by that time we were already we had already made the deal with Netflix, and the question was how fast could we get it on Netflix? And if you remember, we spent a fair amount of time standing in snowbanks, calling our post finishing, going absolutely bananas, trying to get things moved around and get things done so that we could probably set the all time record for getting a film on the air on Netflix. With yeah, all that's my fault. Okay. yeah, that's his fault for just being the most disorganized editor. No, no, you guys, you guys were. And, and my it's fault true. for not even knowing what deliverables were. I was literally <laughs> like, Doug, what does, what is Netflix asking for? And he's like, I know the guys for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we spent, we definitely, we, spent made the movie like, we definitely made the film like a couple kids in uh, an apartment, like the year after we graduated. We, it, um, I always tell people to set up your project like as if you even if it's the smallest personal project you've ever you've ever made set it up organize it like your plan is to deliver it to netflix because you'll you thank yourself know. later yeah. yeah yeah for for anybody in the audience who hasn't seen period end of sentence or doesn't know what we're talking about uh the, it's one of the most wonderfully grassroots and and truly community-based films uh that's ever gone from literally bake sales and yoga thons to raise money all the way to the Oscars and uh, uh, you know fight on SC you guys have brought home the gold for SC with that film which is fantastic but uh, the process getting there was really interesting because we didn't start at Sundance uh, we started at the Cleveland International Film Festival it's one of my most beloved film festivals and of course uh, you won that which was great. We, we we took home the trophy there. That is an Oscar qualifying film festival. So instantly we were in the race. You know, we were we were potentially uh, an Oscar qualified. Well, we were Oscar qualified film, and then we just played pretty much every festival. I remember you guys going to literally every festival after that and winning. I think three or four more qualifiers. So people started to pay attention, even though we hadn't started at Sundance and we didn't have that big initial splash. Um, people just found us and discovered us and ultimately Netflix discovered us and uh, that ended up uh, being a being a great partnership so th but that did put us in the snowbanks during uh, a brunch <laughs> I remember I walked out of the brunch into a snowbank and we were all furiously making phone calls to get things moved around and get things moving um, and somehow we managed to get that film done way faster than almost anything I've ever seen get delivered so we opened up the project. I have a vivid memory of opening up the project because some time had passed, obviously, since yeah. we finished. And it was like, Rika, Rika was ready to kill me because it was like copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of final of export. Final, 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 <laughs> period, period, period. final export 002, final export I'm 003. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think I'm tired was part of it. And fun fact, uh, it was rejected from Sundance. Yeah. Uh, and I think we were up to 11 rejections from Sundance total before this, this project. Yeah, we've been saving them. So, so Oh yeah, you should. We're gonna create a collage in our office. So, I see kids. If you don't get into Sundance, the road is not over. Uh, I, I tell people all the time, uh, Jiro Dreams of Sushi was rejected by Sundance. That's right. Oh, was it? I didn't know I didn't that. Know that. Yeah, we didn't get in. For all the students out there, don't right. stop crying. Don't discouraged. Yeah. I love oh. that doc so much. Thank you, but uh, yeah, it's crazy. It premiered at Tribeca. Yeah, we didn't yep. get into Sundance. Wow. Wait, yep. you made you made that film? It was an EP on it. Wow, so cool. <laughs> really great. Really, oh, awesome. really beautiful work. Yeah, there, 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 are, there are hallways filled with awards and statues for films that didn't get into Sundance. And there's a yes. lot of other ways to do it. I always tell filmmakers I work with, it's like if you, if you put all your eggs in the Sundance basket, as great as Sundance is, it's not the only place to premiere your film. And in fact, uh, Sundance will tell you that. And they're, they're, they, they make a big point to say, we, and they send the nicest rejection letters, by the way. I think you guys, those of you who have gotten rejected from Sundance, the, the letter is so nice and it's so encouraging and it's so positive to keep going. And it's absolutely true because if you take that as we failed, then the incredible path ahead of you will just close. And you, you don't want to think that. Sundance is a great place to premiere. It's not the only place for sure. Thing that I also realized as a filmmaker after 
trying to do festivals quite a bit as you know a young SCR is that festivals have a program that they have to fulfill and they want it to flow. They want to tell a story. And sometimes the story that you've created is just not the one that they want to tell. The, and it doesn't necessarily mean the caliber of filmmaking isn't incredible. It just means that that's not the year that your story is aligned. Or maybe yeah. it's just too long. Sometimes yeah. it's run it's time. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's run time. Yeah. Yeah. With shorts, especially. I mean, that's, that's something that I know the, the team, you, you, you guys and I, we talked about that. I mean, we had a longer film that got shorter and yeah. I, I usually hold out that shorter is better unless there's a reason that it needs to be much longer. Mm -hmm. um, past 40 minutes, it's no longer even considered a short. So, uh, you know, it has to be 40 minutes or less. And then I know as somebody who screens a lot of shorts, when I see a 40 and I see a 20, it's like, I'll watch at 20, you know, that's human nature is if you can tell the story shorter and a little tighter, that's a good thing. Um, not all docs are like that. A lot of docs do need a really a big canvas to paint on. But, uh, uh, you know, if you can get things out of it and still tell the same story, and that goes for fiction too. Um, you know, anything that's really brisk will will tend to get a lot of attention because people are just people. They, they don't have the sitability that they used to. So you want to, uh, you want to make films that are conscious of people's time, you know, that, that does come up. Um, but talk about the new one, Rick and Sam, I want to hear about the new one and, and what it took to get it to Sundance, to get it finished and, and ready and the kind of adventure you had. It's such a unique um, kind of a story hiding in plain sight in America. It's really wonderful. Yeah, I mean, it's that's you hit the nail on the head. It's a story hiding in plain sight in America. And I think it sort of came from like out of period, end of sentence. Um, where period really like established that this is the taboo, right? That exists um, around menstruation and this is the issue and it presents a solution. But I think after period end of sentence, um, the PAD project, which is a nonprofit organization that was formed out of period end of sentence and is still existing and thriving. Um, and I'm proud to say I'm a board member on, on the, uh, the board of the PAD project. Um, but anyway, the, the PAD project uh, was sort of looking for, you know, how can we um, find stories about communities and, and people that like really uplift girls um, at this time in their lives when they first menstruate? Um, not because of the movement that sort of has, um, has cropped up in the past few years, um, but rather just like a community that over a long period of time has always kind of had a really positive um, mentality around menstruation. And that, that, that really like, you know, I think that's where the project was sort of born. Yeah, we discovered that that was the case with a lot of um, Native American uh, groups and um, that their societies are matrilineal and they um a lot of them have coming of age ceremonies where that are meant to uplift their girls you know when they have their their first period and so that was a, sort of an interesting um follow-up to period end of sentence which was about a more negative you know kind of like an, an issue in the in the menstrual world so um that's kind of where the project started yeah, I think what I love about about your films is they're applicable globally, you know, and that's that's happened. Certainly it happened with period and it's, it allows other cultures to see this and, and identify issues uh, for girls and women in their own societies and talk about these things, especially with taboo subjects. It's just it's so great to break those open and to say we can talk about this. The film gives people the ability to do that. And I think a lot of a lot of great films uh, and Sundance always seems to pride itself on breaking open things. They, there's a lot of taboos have been shattered over the years at Sundance, and that's a kind of a, a proud heritage, um, whether it's LGBTQ or uh, or uh, women's issues or environmental issues, um, justice issues, racial issues. That's where you go often to see films that are going to break open the, the right. sacred egg of something we're not supposed to talk about. And suddenly everybody's talking about it. Um, yeah, I've, I've had that experience with films too. Yeah. This film is like specifically about um, a girl and her community um, in Northern California. They're from the Kaduk tribe. Um, and it's specifically about their preparation for her specific coming of age ceremony called the Ihuk. Um, and, and it's 
interesting, like as you watch the film, I, you know, I think the, the most important thing that we hope at least not native audiences take away from it is that, um, you know, don't look at them and try to replicate their culture or go out and have a coming of age ceremony. Like look at them as um, a model, like of how we should be treating young people at this time juncture in their lives. And, and you just look at the, the family and the amount of support that is around Ati, the main character. Um, and, and you look at the support system that's gonna be with her for the rest of her life, not just at, you know, at 13 years old. Um, and, and that's really the hope is that people can walk away seeing the film and saying, okay, this is how we can sort of shift our perspective. And this is, this is what we can do in our own community, in our own culture to support a girl at this time in her life. Yeah. And it's so humanizing when you see her and her friends talking excitedly about my flower dance and my flower dance. And it's, it's something really special that I think will, will, give girls particularly of that age a lot of encouragement to not not look in fear at something that nobody's talking about it's like here's a film that you can watch and say other people are are dealing with this in a really really great and celebratory way rather than this fearful way yeah um just great work as always and sam your cinematography and your just your sense of space is so so terrific always um right you know, known that for a long time. And uh, I guess the big question everybody asks at Sundance is what's next? And I'll ask that of everybody uh, as we go around, but we'll start with you guys. What's uh, what's next on the horizon? Do you want to start? Yeah, I mean, it's always hard for me to answer that question. Because um, <laughs> I'm always just like, you know, <laughs> searching. I think I'm like a little ADD when it comes to the projects. Um, but really just searching for, for that longer form project. I think we've just been, you know, stuck in doing shorter projects for a long time. And, you know, while we, while we've really enjoyed that experience, I think ready to do the longer form project. And um, I look at someone like Abby and I just like, like I like bow down to her. And I think she's so cool for the work that she's done. Cause I remember seeing the suitcase just being like, um, a student, or I think right out of USC film yeah. school. We were star, starstruck. And just being like, this, like, this filmmaker is incredible. What is she going to do, like, right away? What is she, you know, what's the next thing that she's going to do? And, and you see her film and it's coming out, you know, whatever, however many years later. And I just love that because I think it's like you. I don't know. I, we could talk about this offline, but I just think <laughs> it's so, it's so great to be so thoughtful about the projects that you're taking on and the stories that you're telling, you know. And, I think it's a good think, lesson too for other student, current students, because you tend to think that like, you know, you need to have a project every single year or multiple projects a year or every other, or every other year even. And that's really not the case. I mean, at least, you know, I think our approach and um, has always been to do kind of passion projects only. And that tends to mean doing less projects, but we pour so much of ourselves into every project that it better be a passion project, you know, before we, before we decide to take it on. It's a huge commitment. Yeah. But it pays off really does. And that is a perfect segue back to, to you, Abby, tell, tell us what's up. First off those, that's like the nicest thing I've heard. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> that's so sweet. Um, it, it, it's it, that I, I remember sitting in that same spot watching, um, uh, Stephen Capel, who was a senior classmate of mine and watching um, the people that came before him, uh, Ryan Coogler and um, so many of those incredible filmmakers that I remember watching, like I I'd found uh, Coogler's files for Fruitvale on the sound server at one point. And I like remember going through all of them and just like listening to the stems <laughs> and being so inspired by folks who had been out um, uh, not too far off. I, I premiered Suitcase in 2017 at Tribeca, and uh, it's been a pretty in, insane world since then. Um, it's not a straightforward line when you create something strong. Suitcase was incredibly well received by the industry, but um, but it's still really hard to get a job, to get people to pay for your films, to, to create art that actually matters and not just go direct a sequel of something which that's noble in and of itself. Like there's definitely a place for that kind of art, but uh, it's, it's, it's not easy. 
it's just, it's not. And it, for um, those who are in the position, hire people, hire people and uh, train people, open doors for people. Those who aren't, um, push, <laughs> just keep pushing and don't give up. That's, that's what you have to do. And you just have to say, I belong here. I belong in the room and create a path um, in which you do where, where none exist. Um, I don't know what my next path will be. I know that um, the, the state of indie films is not <laughs> incredible right now, but I know that I'll create something that matters um, to me as a filmmaker that matters uh, for audiences who haven't seen stories that are like that, that reflect uh, a space that they haven't seen. Yes, I've got a catalog of projects that I want to see on the screen, um, but can I guarantee which one of those I'll be able to get backed at this point? No. Um, I do hope that, you know, with every inch forward that another door is, is uh, cracked wider, but um, I'm grateful for SE putting on panels like these so that I can see, hey, um, those doors do exist and those paths can be carved even if you don't see them readily in front of you. I think you bring up a great point, Abby, that, that the, the world kind of needs these film festivals and these incubators and these, these workshops and labs and the other things that are associated with a lot of film festivals because otherwise the business is somewhat risk averse, right? So they'll, they'll often do the same thing over and over again. And the innovation, the breakouts and the explosive, oh my God, premieres at Sundance and Tribeca and the, and the smaller regional festivals, those are where, that, that's like the new material that, that we build new stars out of, literally to, well, to go cosmological. Thing, the other thing I would say about those folks is that every overnight success has been working for like 10 years in the dark. Yeah, absolutely. So don't be afraid to go back and work in the dark for five years for mm -hmm. however long on that project that just you know, <laughs> you know, is, is something that has to be told because that's what matters and it, embrace that voice in, inside of you and the voice of, of that artist that has to come out. That's, that's what matters. That is inspiring. All right, everybody listen carefully. This is what you're supposed to do. Stay in the dark. Oh, we've been staying in the dark. Wait a minute. No, no, no. That's uh, always keep pushing those ideas that you really believe in. And I think that's why I, uh, so far I've heard that on the panel across the board is, is dare to, to try to bring your stuff. You know, that really. Yeah, helps. because at the end of the day, like I, the, the further you get into the arena, right. And I feel really fortunate in that, like, I, I actually have been able to work with some of the people who now I've, I've looked at from afar and said, wow, you guys know what you're doing. You have it figured out when you, you know, you're a 10 year old and you've been watching their films for their entire mm -hmm. life. Like, okay, it was a dream fulfilled to work with. And those folks are just figuring it out like you. Yeah, they might have a catalog of experience, but say you belong and, and own it. You're going to be figuring it out alongside other people that are figuring it out too. And, and you'll bump into those same people who are scratching their heads going, how did we get here at Sundance? That's what I love about it. You mentioned Ryan Coogler. I actually was sitting on a freezing cold uh, bench waiting for one of those very infrequent buses at, at Sundance. And I was sitting with a bunch of people who were waiting to go to their premiere. And it was the Fruitvale Station crew when it was Fruitvale Station. And it was really, uh, it was amazing because we started talking SC. I mean, it was all like SC lingo and, and talking about the sound department and all the, the things that everybody went through. And I thought, these guys got, they probably do okay. They're probably going somewhere good. And sure enough, a lot of them have risen up along with Ryan to, to do so much great work on his films and then on their own in many different ways. So We've that's- done the same. I mean, the, the folks that, some of the folks that have been working with me are people that were sitting next to me in class, yeah. my co-producer, my sound designer, um, uh, many, many years before, not many, many in case you're listening, uh, Michael Abels, our composer, came through the same doors that we came through. And it's, it's just the craft. Like it, you do it because you love it. You do it because you have to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, be kind to your fellow students, everybody. For all the students watching, you're. I remember yeah. Dean Bailey, <laughs> Dean Bailey, uh, in our first, uh, in our first class, said, "Look to your left and right, and don't be an asshole." Sorry to. <laughs> right on, <laughs> you Dean. Be Bailey. working with those for the rest of your life. Right. We heard the same line, but I think it was from Joe. Wallenstein. Joe Wallenstein. Oh, Joe. Yeah. Well. <laughs> 
Joe also says, don't you dare uh, put that in the street either, because <laughs> I'll make you remove it. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, uh, Chung Lin, what's up next for you? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm currently also uh, developing some uh, shorts and uh, feature animated short films like, uh, but uh, um, when I try to like start a project, I'm more started from uh, drawing, like, like in the meal on the play, the all the story like inspired by a sentence that uh, you are what you eat. So instead of like writing a story about it, I draw it. I draw the characters that are uh, oh the uh, and the, the characters are just visually tense into the stuff they eat. So when all the characters lined up, I feel it's very interesting to myself, and I really want to dig more dig dig into the story like. So it's more like a how desire animalized characters and uh, blah, blah. And the, like the story comes out. So right now I'm also like drawing some stuff and the, get the concept and also try to think about some story uh, in the future film and also a uh, short film. I want to uh, be um, trying to build up my uh, animation director um, the pass. And uh, yeah, I think that's most of the things that I'm recently working on. Oh, by the way, I know also I'm, I'm also working on some like industry project like Netflix or original animation. I'm also helping on the story. So uh, I think I learned a lot from industry as well. Like when you make an independent short film and when you work uh, with a big crew, it's kind of a different thing. So it's also, I, uh, I think it's, it also helps me like when I have like bigger production for feature film, I can also like apply what I got from the the industry. So that's great. Uh, you know, currently uh, there's a lot of talk about with with all of the headlines about Meta and and Quest and VR and things. There's a lot of push to expand that boundary into you know interactive and movable animations, things like that. Um, are you are you more interested in continuing the great tradition of of sort of the cinematic animation, or have you been exploring VR too? What's what's uh, what are you thinking? I I'm not that like a, a technic guy. Like to to think more about like technic stuff. I'm still like more uh, like storyteller. So I'm still more uh, thinking about the idea itself, concept itself. So like. Uh, me on the play is, is kind of very different from live smartphone. So mm -hmm. in each film I made, I always try to find the best uh, storytelling uh, technique for the story. So I, but I don't limit myself to to this way, uh, to like traditional way because I, I think now like the VR stuff, like we do see like VR animation comes out and uh, it really like changed my mind about the the like the storytelling way, but I, I, I think it's a kind of different way to telling story in VR. I, I also, I saw some VR live action film and the, the audience is kind of like, you make choice for the mm -hmm. character. So it's kind of like a different, like you show what the, you want the audience to see and uh, you can just let them have the freedom to see what they want. So yeah, maybe someday, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> never say never, right? Um, yeah, I, I mean, one of the great things about Sundance, for those of you who will be going in the future, don't miss the new frontiers. Also, definitely see the animated shorts and any animated film they have there. But the new frontier section is really about pushing the medium. Um, and there have been many different versions of that. There's been trace mapping and projection mapping on buildings, uh, big, uh, almost art gallery style presentations of giant images rooms and experiences, even interactive real life stuff. Um, but of course, VR has been really kind of rising at the uh, New Frontiers. And I remember that's the first place year after year that I would see the latest breakthrough when they first had the rift or they first even had the thing before the rift with the antennas going everywhere. Um, and you could see the technology forming and you could see where it could go. And now we're getting that phase where you're actually making art out of that. Um, so it's, it's an interesting time. Um, and that's, that's one of the things about Sundance is they try to be really inclusive to all kinds of filmmaking. And I'm really glad that they're bringing lots of animation into uh, mm -hmm. and that they're supporting, you know, your, your projects as you go forward. Um, that's great, though. I can't wait to see what you do next. Yeah. Um, and Ross. Oh, Ross, are you and, and Rodney going to give us more nightmares soon? What do you, what's, the, what's the plan? 
I, I actually have a good, I have a call with Rodney tomorrow to talk about our next project. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty crazy in the, in the Rodney Asher way, uh, but awesome. And, you know, so innovative, and, you know, he's created his own genre. And um, so I'm excited about that. Uh, we had um, a doc series for Netflix about Neymar, the soccer player came out earlier this week. So everyone please watch it 1000 times. Uh, that'd be appreciated. Um, and we've got more episodes of The Way Down coming out in April. That was a doc series we did for HBO Max. And um, a couple, uh, an indie film I did about uh, the homelessness issue in Venice uh, that we're finishing up as well. And what else do we have? Um, and I had a, a big rom-com that I shot this summer in New York. And we actually had an actress bow out because she got cast in Abby's film. So thank you, Abby. I'm sorry, who? Salinas. Salinas? Yeah. No way. Wait, what yeah. was she going to play? It was a, not a good role. She made the right decision. Uh, Did you see it, her? She <laughs> crushed it in ours. I haven't seen your movie yet. I really want to see it, but it was, it was, it was really about schedule and I'm, you know, our Without role. Without seeing yours, I 100% know she made the right decision. <laughs> Believe me, she made the right decision. Our, it, she would have been, you know, number 11 on the call sheet and it was, it was uh, great. great. She's in like every other frame of our movie. She oh, it's amazing. Incredible. But, uh, yes. but uh, so, so no hard feelings. Uh, no, ours was a, a very fun, you know, commercial romantic comedy we did for Netflix. Ross, I would steal her again. No, <laughs> believe me, we've no, no, no problem. Uh, Lesson to everybody watching. It's a small world, everybody. It's a small world. <laughs> it's a real small world. Uh, yeah, it's, and, and borrowing and sharing and, uh, and, and telling each other what's good. That's, that's a very good part of this. So I'm really excited to open this up. We have, a, we have a nice audience out there uh, of a lot of people who probably have some great questions, some of whom are students right now. So uh, let's put our, our, our alumni caps back on and give great advice as, as uh, if through a time machine. Doug, I have to jump in about 10 or 15 oh. minutes with some childcare issues. So uh -huh. sorry about that. You, you, well, you're not doing I anything. I got about 10, look, but not because of a kid. Yeah. So. <laughs> not like you guys have anything to do. You only have film at Sundance and nine productions going. So I, I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Uh, no, that's great. In, in case anybody out there has questions specifically for Abby or Ross, make sure you, you get those in there real early. So we, we've got a couple standing by here. Uh, what grade level do you have to be to participate um, as a USC student, uh, SCA student in the Sundance Film Festival? Great question. Um, the truth is, I'll, I'll speak from my own experience, um, that you can, uh, oh, we're going to, we're going to do this, uh, live, Alex says. So we're going to bring our, our questioner oh, on live. No, 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 it's, ju it's just so that everyone can see the question. Oh, okay. Excellent. Um, I, I know for a fact that student films have actually gone to, uh, Sundance many times. And, uh, I had a student last summer in my documentary seminar that literally she's on her 30th film festival now. She's won like eight or nine of them. She just won at the Portland Film Festival. She's traveled all over the world already. And she made that film last summer. And she's been, she's literally gone to every film festival that she could get her film into. Uh, so yes, um, students of, of any level, if they have a great film, there's, there's an office for this. There's a festival coordination office and uh, they will help you actually get your- Andrean's incredible over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that we, we really do take care of student films. If they're, if they're great and they're festival quality, they will get out there and they can win awards and get you started so that you're not finding out about the film festival circuit after you get out of school. It's a great thing to get a film out there early, for sure. It's a great question. Um, uh, Kate Cook asks, have any of you been on the spaceship and more specifically, <laughs> Uh, the karaoke room. Hope to meet some of you there. I hear about the spaceship. I've been working all week, so I haven't been to the spaceship yet. How is the spaceship? I've been. It's quite awkward. <laughs> That's funny. So it's a, it's a virtual room, right? It's a, uh, describe it if you can. Um, it's, it's a, you know, you have a little avatar with your photo on it and, uh, you use your, keyboard to go backwards and forward. And if you can figure out how to block the privacy settings on your lap or unblock the privacy settings on your laptop, you can talk to people. But pro tip, make sure to do that before you try to have a conversation. <laughs> turn off privacy. Okay. And turn it back on when you're done. Probably, right? Yes. 
<laughs> you can also yeah, I, jump up and down. Yeah. If you press space, you can jump up and down. You can jump oh. up and down, and and it's, and it's funny. You could like run away from people. Yeah, mostly which... we ran. We we got our steps in. We like just did laps around the the tree. Yeah, <laughs> like so. it wouldn't be socially acceptable to like run away from someone who walked up <laughs> in real life, but on the spaceship, people do it all the time. <laughs> Weirdly enough, this is what the real Sundance is like, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People jump up and down and run around trees a lot and then run away from each other. It's it's very remarkably similar. <laughs> and if you have the VR set up, you can lower, you can you can put it your arm like, yeah. So you so they have a full, do they have a, a quest version or a, or you just go in there on the web and, and inside your quest? I think, I think you can just uh, type in some code and then you can just use your VR setup and you can, your arm is free. You can hug people and uh, yeah. I got it. I, I, I got more, I got to have more time to play around in the spaceship here. Uh, yeah, it is. Sundance is trying to make it as interactive as possible. So <laughs> you're, you're, you may have, your mileage may vary as they say. Um, okay. Lauren McDowell asks, after school, what kind of deliberate work do you uh, do you do to push yourself to keep learning as filmmakers? That's a great question. Uh, anybody want to take that? Um, yeah, I, Abby, I can speak to that. Um, so it depends on your goal, right? How do you want to grow as an artist? So for me, I directed a lot while I was at SC and I need to grow as a writer. So I started a writing group and started reading a lot more scripts and uh, writing more regularly so that I could grow as a writer. Um, it meant a regular diet, like a weekly, a weekly thing where we read scripts and, and then um, watch the film so that you're understanding the craft side of it and then also just writing more regularly. Um, but it really, for me, depends on where I wanna grow. I think that's great advice. It's right, writing is at the center of everything. Uh, whether you, you're writing scripts or you're writing descriptions of your films, your press kit, your, you know, the, 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 the website you're creating, the writing about your film as well as, um, as well as writing the films themselves is so important. So everybody should, should keep writing for sure. Um, absolutely great advice. Uh, Ross, any, any thoughts about that? Like what, what keeps you going through all these uh, thousands of projects? You know, it, it's ever evolving. You know, I started my career making, you know, independent narrative films. And then I started making low budget horror films and then nonfiction and then nonfiction series and, you know, romantic comedy. So maybe it's just my unmedicated ADD, but I just, uh, I always want to kind of keep moving forward and, and not repeating history and challenging myself. You know, I, I mean, I can't tell you how many things on my desk right now. I have no idea how I'm going to figure it out, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> You'll just get it done. That's really, yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. Anybody else with a thought? That, uh, that's a really good question. Is getting out of school is, is kind of scary for undergrads and grads. It's a big deal because it's the real world. Hello. Um, how do you keep motivated? How do you keep doing things? Um, I don't know if anybody else has any wisdom. I, on that. I have a response to that. Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, like I knew I wanted to direct, but it, there's always been like a curiosity to like um, just try different things. Um, you know, early on, I was like, okay, I'm directing only fiction. And I had never taken a documentary course at USC or even like imagine myself doing documentaries. And then the opportunity for period end of sentence came along and it was nothing at the time. But to me, like the thing that was exciting was a, I connected to the, the, the story and the issue at hand and B I, felt like, oh, wow, this is kind of scary. And I'm curious what a documentary is going to, you know, directing a documentary is going to be like. So, you know, went in that direction. And then it sent me down a path of doing documentaries for a year, few years after the Academy Awards. It was like, you know, I'm really interested in like the advertising industry. I wonder what this will be like. And it's been that for the past few years as well. And I think like the next thing I'm like, animation, like <laughs> feature, like fiction, feature film. I don't know, but I think it's, uh, for me, I think your world just gets so much bigger, you know, like leaving, leaving school. I was like, oh, wow. We're also living in a time that is so unique. And I don't think like, as far as filmmaking goes, is like any other time that's ever been where there's so many opportunities for like such a vast array of content to be created. 
Um, so it's just exciting for me to think about directing, um, not just in one path, but in all sorts of different ways. Yeah, I'd say it's a really good time to be an excited filmmaker with a lot of options, you know, and a lot of a lot of potential to work in different mediums, you know, it used to be a bit more straightforward which direction you go now now you can really chart your own course more I think uh, there's just a lot of possibilities of what you can do with your skills coming out of school. Uh, great answers, everybody. And, and uh, I like the animation answer because we have actually a question uh, for Chong Lin here. Uh, let's see. I have a question. Uh, what difficulties did you encounter when becoming a director of animated short films while focusing on storytelling? I also really like creating stories, design, and animated short films, and I'm interested in the intersection of tech and art, but I don't have a traditional technical animation educational history. Care to comment on that? I think for animation, like they're really like different styles. Some animation is like very um, Disney style, like very polished. All the animation is beautiful and uh, 24 frames per second. But also like there are some animation is very limited. They just uh, doesn't animate everything, but they just uh, have the necessary movement, the character need. But also they're also still a good film. And uh, I think if, the animation is also involved a lot of uh, technique like uh, um, character design and uh, like uh, animation, like directing is like, because I'm also, uh, because I start to learn uh, drawing very uh, early, like in my, in my life. So it's like from uh, age of eight, so I can draw myself. So I storyboard myself, do the animation myself. And also I'm the director, so I can change the stuff. Like when the movie go, goes on, like the performance, I'm not satisfied, the story, I'm not so satisfied, I can change it. But uh, when you like, but if you don't have this training, like you don't have like a very like uh, solid, uh, uh, like training about drawing, I think it's fine. You can still tell the story. You can just, uh, you don't have to, you don't have to make the animation to be very polished, very like, uh, fully animated the story is still the very important things you can you can try to find some other people's as a reference or find a mentor like you can follow the path at the beginning but uh, later on when you like when you feel get attention when people think you are a good storyteller they will support you like they can write something for you you can hire animator to work for you so you can make the animation be, like if you don't you cannot draw but you can hire disney animator or some other technique, like some uh, style that you really want. You can have some artists to work for you to do the animation that is very different from very traditional animation. So I think it's still like, you need to know like you, what do you want to do? You want to be a storyteller or you want to like to be a character designer? Like you, you, you should to um, know that you always still need to cooperate with others. So. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting because one of the great animators of our era, independent animators, Don Hertzfeld, I'm sure you know uh, his mm -hmm. work. Um, his his stuff is extremely basic, in, at least in its yeah. construction. He's gotten a lot more sophisticated, but his early animations were basically stick drawings. But it was story, right? It was all about the story and how wild the story got to, and eventually really emotional things that he he made films about. Um, and it wasn't about really sophisticated 3D yeah. rendering or anything. It was just very, very simple animations. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's why uh, I think uh, like people should like check more like uh, Sundance Film Festival's the, the animation, because I think when Sundance pick up animations, they don't like really care too much about the technique. Mm -hmm. Like for some like animation festival or some film festival, they are really like trying to see like the style is very stand out. But I think for Sundance, they're still like more like storytelling based or like more focus on that. So, and the technique, you can see some animation is very simple. Like one of the animation, I, sorry, I, I don't remember the name, but the techniques is very, very simple. It's just like doodling. And, uh, yeah. but it's very like when I watch it, oh, and the, the director is another film is actually like uh, nominated for the Oscar. Is well, uh, what is the name of the film? I don't, I don't, sorry, I don't remember. It's, it's something like about um, Tomorrow's World or something like, uh, yeah, it's very... that's, that's Don Hertzfeld, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, and I, it's an I, amazing I, film, it's really deep, but it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I agree. And some, sometimes this kind of like, because nowadays, like when you consider yourself, like you, when you try to submit your film to a festival, you are not, especially the, the, when the program is not like a student program, you're really compete with the big studio or really compete with people like with a lot of budget. So you need to know like what is your uh, could do best. Like when I do live smartphone, it's, it's more about the idea. I don't like put so many times on the technique, but I just uh, try to get a good idea and try to find a good style for it. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's great advice. It, it's not, it's always about story. I mean, yeah. the simplest animation can make people cry and advanced 3D animation can make people yawn, right? <laughs> it's yeah, just, yeah. It doesn't, it's not always the technology or the sophistication. Yeah, that's great, yeah. great advice. Okay, um, we have one from uh, Ken Blando says, hi, advice on bridging the gap that can happen between graduating from SCA and being paid enough to live and work in the industry and stay focused in building your career in the direction you want. This is, uh, this is literally like every question you ask when you graduate. So uh, let's hear it from our, from our peeps. Uh, can we uh, clarify, what is it you want to do? I can give more general, but just- Oh, we'll see if uh, we get a comment there. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's, it's, it's tricky, right? Like you have to be able to pay your bills <laughs> and it depends on what your, your life circumstance and situation is, um, whether you can kind of float or uh, live off of uh, whatever your savings or job is. If you can get a, a job that just is kind of mindless so that you can create that's an ideal scenario. I mean, at one point, I think I was selling, um, uh, I was buying websites online and uh, turning them around, like flipping them, like you do real estate <laughs> at one point. So I buy like, I don't remember the, the names at this point, but like whatever.com because whatever.com would get a lot of clicks and I'd hold it for like a month and then I'd flip it for like a couple grand and that would pay my rent for a month, you know? Um, and it was amazing because I didn't really have to think about it and it paid my bills, but you know, I ran out of ideas for that after a while. <laughs> um, Pretty creative. I'm sure you got into some wild- I love workout. the ingenuity. <laughs> really, Thank you. I wish I would have thought of that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it really helped. And then also like festivals, surprisingly enough, like they, they pay certain stipends. And I mean, we never really, you know, you're, you're the money that you spend on, um, on, on your shorts is just an investment in your future. That's what gets you your jobs and your calling cards and are your calling cards to, to open those doors doors in the industry but um i remember we were in this festival that we got in in china and i got literally an email from them with uh like all chinese lettering and then an account number um for western union to go and get money wired to me and i was like well this is real shady but there's a western union down the street so let's find out and i went to the western union and it was like twenty five hundred dollars and i was like great thank you so you know <laughs> so you know sign up for those things I think we won a prize and then like two months later I got this giant statue that I was like oh hello nice to know we actually won from some festival and I mean I I very yeah, ignorantly could have like had a friend you know check it out for me who actually spoke the language properly not my google translator <laughs> um but you know, I'm grateful that it sustained me for a while. And I'm grateful for the people who cared enough about our work to pay us small stipends because those small stipends go a really a long way when you're a young artist. That's a success story. Actually yeah. cashing, cashing a, a, a stipend from a festival that turned out <laughs> to be like that. I love the thing about trophies too, because every festival like tries to outdo the next one in wacky trophies. And my favorite of all time is the New Hampshire Film Festival has these enormously heavy granite slabs that they give everybody. And there's you know, no there's... Suitcase, you get your suitcase back onto the airplane when you're going home with this slab of granite that is really heavy. And because it's it's New Hampshire. So yeah, go figure. I keep them out because if someone ever broke into my house, I would just use one of them. <laughs> <laughs> they're always like sharp glass, dangerous looking things. Uh -huh. yeah, they're great as weapons. They're really useful. Yeah. 
Uh, anyway, the, yeah, well, the, the transition out again, there's a whole question of how do you pay for life? And film festivals are a great stepping stone for like your calling card, like you said, but they don't really pay much or anything sometimes like certain festivals, Sundance certainly will help you find lodging and things like that, but they don't really pay for it. And film festivals are expensive, particularly oh, Park City, getting a condo in Park City is insane. E even staying at a hotel outside of town is really expensive and everything there is expensive. So it's it, it, you have to prepare for the expenses of going to a festival like this. That makes the virtual one maybe a little nicer for people who don't have the resources because you can attend the festival, but you don't have to pay the crazy money. But we do want to go back and do them live someday. So hopefully, uh, hopefully there'll be a balance in that or funds that can help that. Yeah. I Is have it? some stories yeah. too about go ahead. making money out of school. Um, it was like driving for Uber. Um, she was driving for Uber until while, while we were making we were period. Until I was like, I'm uncomfortable. I feel uncomfortable as a woman driving for Uber, and like I can only do it for so many hours in a day um so there was that and then there was a lot of like how can I how can I like be like still exercising that directing muscle or the filmmaking muscles while making money um not just taking like PA jobs and stuff but I like a, one way for a couple years where I, like I was sustaining myself was just by directing um reels for actors there are a lot of actors in los angeles who've never been in anything before and would pay for you to make them a reel and have them actually direct it and cut the reel and make it look like a real believable scene um so i did a lot of that and it was really great because it was just like you're also exercising that muscle you know and like working learning how to like work quick learning how to work with actors who don't have a lot of experience um and then it was like in the summertime, I would teach this like high school filmmaking workshop. And, um, and again, another great way to like be current and like constantly still working towards the craft um, and finding a way that you can sort of sustain yourself so that when you come home at night or on the weekends or whenever you have time off, you can actually be working on the things that make you. Yeah fulfilled yeah i shot yeah. a lot of um, cooking tutorial videos survive any way you can looks like abby do you have to go yeah thanks so much for having yeah. me guys i gotta it's, go it's a total joy congratulations i can't wait to see what happens next with your film and your films to come um thanks for being part of the fight on crew here uh, thank you such a pleasure appreciate you guys also we'll can't wait to see your projects we'll see you at the next one <laughs> <laughs> yeah hopefully in my snow boots all right bye guys and if if everybody else can hang on we do have a couple more questions and now it's it's getting to be a nice intimate little pool so we can answer these real quick oh, um oh oh doc I, I actually i want to uh have some add-on on the on the uh previous question yes please so, go ahead yeah because i think this also happens to international students because USC is very uh, got a famous reputation. So many international students comes here. So after school, I think they also like they also need to dealing with like visa problems and uh, find a job to stay here and also need to make a film. I'm kind of lucky because I got the student academy award, so it's very easy for me to apply the O M visa. But I I know that the process is kind of uh, tough to many students. So. I think that it's still like is is it's, it's about like a time management problem. You still need to you still can work and then try to make a film by yourself. I I finished the meal on the play uh, at the like after the job time, and I think just like what uh, uh Sam says, like you can be very picky to your story. Like just take time to do the story, like because we always have a lot of good ideas. Like I have a. I have a notebook and there are uh, thoughts, but uh, when you really want to do a film, you need to take time to chew the idea over. You need to really think about like what the story should be, what the character should be. So nothing, nothing in rush, because uh, maybe you take one more year to make the film, but you take the film to the next level. So just to uh, take the time, yeah. Yeah, Th this leads me to another question that that's really good for students is, um, uh, who, who was your inspiration? Was there was there a particular teacher at SC that really helped you move to that next level? I know our animation department's amazing, and there might have been somebody, or maybe an outside of that. 
I I think I got inspiration from many teachers like Mac Patterson, Candence, Eric Goldberg, Tom Sido, and uh, uh, Sheila. I I like to talk with uh different teachers like just to set up the office time and come to the office and show the work to them and talk with them because animation like is got a lot of storytelling style and also visual style so you really want to see like how people react and also I think good thing is your classmates because your classmates is they are like in China we mostly like the animation students all have art background. So they are more like uh, in have the similar background, but in USC, like my classmates, uh, some is from a uh, background is like architecture and also from economy. So they you can you can you can just uh, see like how people like think from different perspective. So and uh, you can like we all always have the discussion like when we show or films or show or uh, clips on the class and you can see how your classmates react to it. You, you not only can learn from your um, uh, teachers, from the mentors, but also you can learn from your uh, classmates and also you can learn the things that are from the... I also take some uh, class uh, in production. So like, um, what is that? Well, uh, 506, like teach me how to like frame the how, how to frame the uh how to put the camera how to framing and how to do the light link and how to put the visual structure of the film i think in the usc in the sca we really can take a lot of different class and really can take the advantage from a lot of uh, amazing people so yeah yeah it's it's great i mean it's so many experiences and it opens you up and maybe even changes your path by by yeah. finding somebody who's a real mentor how about Sam and Reka, how about you guys? What, who, is, who is somebody who stood out for you? Because I, I know mine. Uh, oh, perfectly, Billy. Our dog hit her mark there right? in between us. <laughs> I, I always dog. crash every Zoom. Every zoom. Um, do you want to take that? Ton, I mean, tons. There was yeah. like super influential for me was like Seb Ohanian. Um, mm -hmm. Just like learned a lot from him right off the bat. I think he was our first like producing professor. Rachel mm -hmm. Ward, who mm -hmm. is, isn't there anymore. Um, yeah. Peter Robinson, um, who just was so like amazing um, when it came to directing actors, um, and and just like a, I think he comes from a theater background, and mm -hmm. I just I love that and learned so much from him. Um, just tons of people. I mean, people like we still you know yeah keep still in, keep, in, keep touch. in touch with yeah. Um, Jeremy Royce was my cinematography uh, instructor. Um, he was wonderful. I still keep in touch with him a little bit as well. So Tom Miller, yeah, just Tom like Miller. amazing yes. editing, and you know, I I never was in documentary, but you know, I wish I would have taken some of his courses. Yeah, we never had a yeah. class with you, Doug. Yeah, we never had a class with you. Had you had the ultimate class with me, which we was didn't we, even we, know. we didn't even know <laughs> we there was a class with you. <laughs> yeah, we, we worked on a film together and that turned into a class, which was a whole special yeah. other thing. Um, and I'll, I'll do a quick shout out for my beloved Norm Holland. Uh, he was such an important influence on me, not as a student, but as somebody who was coming into teaching at SC. And he really taught me how to teach in a lot of ways, in a way I'd never thought of before. And th that just goes to show you that you never stop learning. You never, you're never done with film school because your whole life is gonna be film school. It really will be. Uh, every experience you have, and, and also your classmates, which I, I think, uh, uh, Lin, you, you said really well, is the, the people you meet are gonna be your compatriots. You're gonna travel with them for a very long time. They're gonna be your, your contemporaries. And you're going to learn from them because everybody's going to have a different journey as they go through this. That's why film festivals are so great because it's a it's a coming together of the tribe in a way. And you get to trade stories. You get to talk about stuff that only we understand. You know, only filmmakers can understand the crazy uh, and, and sometimes sad and sometimes hilarious stories that we tell each other. And you really need that. You need that community. So whether it's online or, or hopefully soon live again. Um, we need that stuff. And I'm, I'm really glad that, you know, we can have this kind of thing here and hopefully <laughs> back in the rooms again uh, next year and later this year as well. Um, we've got a couple more questions. If everybody can hang out, there's a couple of good ones. This is a good one for everybody who's not a filmmaker in the audience. We might we have a bunch of them. Um, I'm in a different industry, social work, mental health, but I want to combine my passion for helping people with telling stories through film. How does somebody with no connections or experience break into this world? 
Uh, that's a really interesting uh, question. Anto Antonio Jenkins, thank you. We could, we could do a whole separate Zoom meeting about, yeah. about that. I think we should. <laughs> um, I mean, period end of sentence is obviously a, a great a great model for that sort of call to action and where sort of like um, advocacy meets film and how they can you know come together to make an actual actual change. Um, that project started period end of, end of sentence started as a. Um, do you want to give a little background? You know the ins, ins and outs of that a little bit better than I. Yeah, I mean, it really just started with a group of high school girls who and like their English teacher who identified this issue um, where girls around the world um, didn't have access to sanitary hygiene products. So they identified this issue and they're like, we want to make a film about it. And none of them ever intended to like, you know, none start of an are. organization yeah, or no like make a movie either. that was going to like go to Netflix or win an Oscar or anything. But um, it really just kind of started with like people putting that energy out into the world. And, you know, and then we came on board and we like continued to put that energy out into the world. And then you surround yourself with a community of people who, you know, and you find people along the way, like Doug, who are filmmakers and who like can help you and guide you. And, you know, we're so lucky that we went to USC film school and we had, um, you know, we went to school of cinematic art, had a background in production, but even before we got to USC, we were like hustling as kids um just to figure out how to make movies and like figure out how you can meet people who are filmmakers and i think the first word of advice um best thing to do when you're starting out is just start meeting people who are also filmmakers um who can help you along the way and just think big as well i think like the originally the, the organization had i think they were picturing something more like one of those now this videos you know like a little psa or something like that and we had just graduated from usc and we're like if we're going to put our like i said before if we're going to put invest a lot of our time into this we want to make a film film like one that can go you know it'll push the cause but also we want it to be entertaining we want it to be art uh and we really just try to push it as far as we could and because of that it you know it really reached a, a huge scale where it could you know uh it, it was it, it had a, a lot of exposure and could make a difference that way and that takes time you don't have the answers it took us two almost three years you know yeah, so yeah. Time to, to make Always it happen make sure you have lots of time yeah so uh Lin, i think i'll let you close it out here do you have any words of inspiration for for many film students watching but also uh everybody who might uh might see your film or get a chance to check out your work uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the internet. Could you just repeat it? Sorry. Sure, sure. Just looking for. We're kind of coming to the end here, and I apologize to everybody who can't mm -hmm. get to all the questions. But I just thought, do you have uh, words of inspiration for the many students we have watching here? Uh, you're a Sundance filmmaker, which is uh, such an honor, and uh, many other accolades you've gotten as well. What mm -hmm. what words of final inspiration would you have for everybody? Final inspiration. I think. Uh, just like me, you can have a notebook. You can just write down um, the ideas because you never know which idea is the, the good one. And uh, sometimes when you just, uh, uh, some some ideas, like uh, recent days, I just dig out a idea that I have so long times ago, but uh, I, I think it's still good. It's like you can, you, because I think it's very easy just to forget things. So you always just, uh, write down when you have the idea, when you have the inspiration, because you never know, like maybe this film brings you Oscar or brings you Sundance, just to keep like, write it down or just to draw it down. Yeah, I think this is very like important for me. Yeah. I would love to see your notebooks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see your sketch pad. I can only imagine what's on there. And I expect that probably that maybe next year at Sundance, I'll get to sit down and watch some animation <laughs> with you. Um, I wanna thank you guys. Thanks for staying um, to, to the very end here. And thanks for everybody who attended. Um, again, we are, we're doing this in a way that hopefully we'll never have to do again, which is away from each other. Uh, the real magic is when you can show this on screens, when we can sit and, and really discuss these films. Uh, I'm really thankful to USC and to our terrific uh, festival office. Thank you, everybody in the festival office, all my friends there, for always supporting us. Uh, if you do get into Sundance as an SC 
grad or as an SC student, you will be amazed at, at the presence of USC cinema there. It's, uh, it's really something. And uh, I'm looking forward to next year meeting all of you out there who are going to have films there in that place, probably the River Horse, which is one of the great parties at Sundance, um, and also seeing all your films. And uh, Rick and Sam, as always, fight on. Um, Jinglin, thank you so much for all the great advice and, and uh, congratulations everybody on your, on your films. Have a great time at the festival for, uh, thank you. for as much as you can, absolutely. And uh, thank you everybody at SC and everybody around the world watching. Uh, we'll see you next year. Thanks, Doug. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.